Made it to the weekend. Adventurers on the rise. Solving riddles and casting mists. Sewing daggers at their eyes. Check your into fortune and glory. Tales of the heart and soul. Finding clues, knocking out some fools. Depending on how they roll. It's D and D. Yeah. We're the after square. It's D and D. Yeah. We're the after square. They got the sheets and they got the dice. The treasures of the past. Yeah. It's D and D. D and D. Do 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 do. We're the after square. What is good, everybody? Welcome back to Twitch.tv slash Vis Patel. I'm your man, Vis Patel, and we are here to play some more Dungeons and Dragons with the Ethnic Squares. Woo! Woo! <laughs> hey! Yay! <laughs> so, uh, so, it is my pleasure to run down the lineup that we have for your new new and improved uh, Ethnic Squares for, for this second campaign. Uh, first up, we have the Elven Bloodhunter Badra, Bolt Reaver by name, Badass by nature. The Keeper of Coin, the Flusher of Fuels, It's Ad Lanyard Lawyer, the Hitman with a fabulous head of hair. The Monster Hunter, ready to make an impact outside of Genshin 2, It's Rahula! That's me! Wow, what a set of titles. I feel like I'm in Game of Thrones. <laughs> <a little bit. laughs> I think awesome. the last time I did one of these for Kamel, he was like, Oi! <laughs> what about me? <laughs> so I had to represent. <laughs> I love it. stuff. How are you? I am doing very well. Glad to be back. Sorry I missed a few um, of the initial Nothing episodes of the second campaign, but I'm excited. I'm excited to see where we're at. Like the okay. uh, the catch up bit is going to be very important for me. I will listen very closely, <laughs> <laughs> as you do all the time. I'm sure. I'm sure. Of course. Of course. <laughs> Next up, it's our resident rogue, Iona Ravenoak. It seems like someone's about to lose an eyeball or several today. The breast brewer in this or any land, as sharp with their wit as they are with their daggers, is Flora Jessie. It's me. How are you? I'm good. How are you? We're doing good, thank you. Great, Great. stuff. Next up, it's our elven ranger, Pavato. When a challenge arises, he can't solve with his mind. His longbow and twin short swords are more than enough. Adding a dash of sass to this fine cocktail of companions, ready to cast Hunter's Mark on you. It's the wonderful Robin GL! Woo! It's me. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> it's you ready to do Doggy Dog? <laughs> I'm ready. Let's I go. I'm ready. Next up, it's the best part of the business. No creature can best this elven adventurous sky with their song or their cutting words. The Doctor of Who, a friend who is more positive than the sound of a PlayStation trophy popping, hosts the phenomenal Locking It Down with Lucy every Thursday on YouTube.com slash LudyXP. It's a ludicrously brilliant Lucy! Ah! What an intro. I well, thank you very much. It always doesn't sound like me. But thank you. Who's this link leading up to? I <laughs> Brilliant stuff. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh -huh. Next up is one half of our new duo for this campaign with Ethnic Squares. An amazing artist and even better friend. Bring the sprinkle of stardust and love of coins to our adventure with their tabaxi and character cut. It's the amazing Nerf Alice. Howdy, howdy, howdy. How are you? I'm good. I actually have a coin with me ready See? for today as well. Look at this. Wow. Ooh. Ooh. Coins, coins, coins. Cool. Great stuff. And to round off our band of heroes, it's our newest friend and adventurer who loves being a total. We, we are all different kinds of lucky to have such a brilliant KFBF with us who is so well versed in D&D. I'm sure they will bring the fun, the hype and the rage with their character, the barbarian known as Boris. Give it up for the marvelous KDG. Woo! How are you? <laughs> yeah, I'm good, thanks. All good. Let's get going with uh, Dungeons & Dragons, as we always do with, previously, on Dungeons & Dragons. Uh, let me just check one thing. Uh, cool. So, uh, Badra, listen up. Here's where you moment to shout, my friend. <laughs> Take notes, so, bro. The ethnic squares ran up, went under the cover of darkness into the part of Timberland, away from the beast that was immune to their melee attacks. Oh. The total Boris made a proper introduction to the party and joined them as they travelled back to the city of Whitestone with an idea to have their weapons silvered. Phil and Robin the ponies drew the cart back to the common ward and the ethnic squares sought the skills <laughs> of the blacksmith, Tali Silverscale. Phil and Robin every time, every time. <laughs> every time, yeah. All, All ponies are called Phil and Robin. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, they're still Boring, my so... ponies from the first campaign. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we've, we've kept them. Good, good, good. Bori silvered their greatsword for 100 gold pieces, while Cut commissioned a set of gauntlets to be made, with silver claws to make the unarmed attack land with purpose. Iona Ravenoak, Pavato, and Badra had 30 pieces of ammunition tipped with silver to slay the werebear that had slaughtered Boris's former companion. Keen to take on this creature before night fell, Tali worked as fast as she could to get the weapons done. They travelled as fast as they could, but the moon was high in the sky when they reached the canyon and their enemy was ready. Oof. Battle commenced with Nero firing a salvo of magic missiles at the creature. Cut decided that patience was the key and waited for the right opportunity to pounce and deliver multiple claw attacks. Badra caught the attention of the werebear with his crimson right. Boris swung their greatsword with all of their might and the beast's shoulder ran crimson as they howled in pain. Sky was on hand to deal arcane damage and inspiration while Pavato fired his longbow to great effect. Ayana hid in the undergrowth and fired from Vishnu's stealth, dealing the final blow to the eyeball. Our heroes were victorious, and revenge was served in the cold of the winter of Whitestone. Nice. How does that sound? That's yeah. pretty good. Yeah. So what does it mean? And so when, 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 sorry, when we say our weapons were silvered, does it just mean you've added silver to them so we can Correct. attack so, vampires and yeah. undead creatures? Absolutely. So you were facing, uh, you were facing off against a werebear, so like a werewolf. And okay. uh, as we all know, okay. to kill one of these creatures, you need silver. Uh, Noted. So yeah. Yep. Sweet. And just for you, my friend, being our treasurer of the party. So oh, in yes, your I need a... moment, <laughs> we have. <laughs> okay, wait, 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 one sec, things. one sec. I need to whip out my character sheet. Okay, and I can <laughs> track all this stuff. Okay. <laughs> what are you laughing at, Robin, eh? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> Somebody's got to take care of it for us. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> All right, what I'll do is You're I'll just take back. a quick screenshot of this and then I'll, I'll there add we it go. Right. So, in some downtime. And, okay, uh, there we go. Cool. So while Cut did uh, some fine investigating work uh, around the creature and in their lair, uh, they retrieved lots of gold, silver, and copper. Uh, Bol Reese uh, skillfully skinned the beast. So you now have one werebear pelt as well to trade. Uh, Ooh. So that is the thing. Uh, are you ready for us to move on? Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. With episode four onwards to the city of secrets. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> secrets. 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 <laughs> the secrets provide. Okay. <laughs> Composing yourself after the intense battle, you take a few deep breaths. Boris's former companion has been avenged, and the Maureen River Run is has one fewer werebears, making the partridge timberland a little safer. Your thoughts stray back to Imon and Ayun, the knowing mistress. Uh, rolling up the pelt of the werebear, you look to rejoin the alabaster trail in the early afternoon. Is there anything that anyone would like to do at this point? Have well, we slept it? Uh, no. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, Neo is tapped for pretty much third level spells. Uh, I don't think too many people took much damage apart from maybe Badra and maybe Boris last time out. <laughs> I'm fine at the moment. I mean, I'm down seven out of seventy-five. So, I mean, I won't say no to getting it back, but <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I agree with that. I'm down about twenty-six. So, I can do with a short rest. Would a short rest get it all back, bits? Uh it will probably get around about half it back. So, you'll have half your uh, constitution dice to roll, your hit dice to roll back. Uh, it's completely up to you whether you want to take a long or a short rest. Uh, we can say for the purposes that if you want to take a short rest, you might be able to do this while on the road. Mm -hmm. Should we try just a little short rest so people can top up if they need to roll some hit dice? Yeah, yeah what's, I don't know, what's the consequence if we don't rest? Or if we do oh, rest? So <laughs> resting really, really uh, replenishes really your spell slots, so you know your oh, biting yeah. inspiration that you have, mm -hmm. uh, you get all those slots back and stuff, and then you could also okay. regain your HP, or at least some of it, with a short rest. Are we on the clock? Long rest recovers everything. Uh, not especially. You can do whatever oh, you want. Yeah, let's rest Oh, then. well then let's do yeah. a long rest, yeah. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> Fine. Are you making camp here, or are you deciding to go a little ways out of where this beast is, or was? Um... 
I mean, I wasn't there, but I mean, like, so I, I mean, feel you were like, there. You were well, the I was there, <laughs> so I feel like we asserted our dominance by killing the beast. So I think we're pretty safe to make camp where we are, uh, unless sure. Bad throw, roll a perception check for me. <laughs> oh god! <laughs> <laughs> right, let's see. Um, I've got advantage on that, so uh, sure. Eighteen plus four, twenty-two. I cool. don't think so, I need to roll the other one. From what you can tell, this area looks pretty safe. Okay, cool. Should we do a long rest here then, and then we can all just heal up and have all our spell slots back? Sure. So, okay. could Boris you guys decide to make camp? Uh, uh, so, obviously, there's, there's plenty of trees around to collect firewood and the sorts, and then you all have a chance to uh, either swap stories, make further introductions, or do whatever it is that you'd like. Sweet. I'm just clicking long rest, confirm. Yeah, so uh, for those who need to, if you click the long rest button on dndbeyond.com, right. yeah. uh, you should be able to confirm that, and it should give you all your spell slots back. And if it doesn't, you can just do that manually by unticking the boxes of spent spell slots and then adding whatever HP you would like back. Huh, that's cool. All right. While we're doing this, even though I've been here the whole time, of course. <laughs> of course. My memory completely fails me. So how how did our two new members <laughs> join our party? Uh, they're free to take it away themselves, or I can give a recap. So something um, I think um, I Boris would quite like to do, if possible, is backtrack to the dead body on the road and give it a nice burial. Because sure. So old Connor, the gameskeeper of Whitestone, they actually took the uh, the body away, so it could be buried with some modicum of uh, uh, dignity. Okay, cool. Um, in that case, I'll, I'll just I, I was going to suggest um, going together to go do that and talk on the way, but in that case, I'll just explain that um, I I was I, I I was wandering along the road looking for for my old companion and. Um, Unfortunately, I found them, but not in the living state I was hoping to find them in. So, oh, no. Um, it, was, it was very sad, but my anger sort of took over and I followed tracks um, and came across the werebear and was ready to just keep, keep slashing at it and attack it until one of us died. But luckily, uh, this team... Uh, stumbled across and pointed out that without silver, I actually couldn't do any damage. Oh. So I jo I joined them and we left temporarily and then came back and avenged my my dead companion. Kick some butt. Hey, that's excellent. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, I'm glad we avenged him. Wow. Well, Boris, did you know this werebear or the person it was in his human form? Do you have any connection with this creature? I I didn't recognize them. Because I just feel like we've made a mistake killing the werebear. Because now we have no way of confirming what Boris is saying is true. Whoa. Dun, dun, dun! Well, I haven't... Well, plot through any standards, everybody. <laughs> I, I, I haven't seen the werebear in their human form. Um, I know there's a, there's a myth that... Um, Lycanthropes turn back to their human form when they die, but given that I took its pelt, I'm going to assume that didn't happen. Um, <laughs> uh, <so laughs> so what, you, what you can do at this stage is can you roll yeah. an insight check for me, please? And then, uh, Boris, can you roll either a persuasion check or a deception check, uh, depending on whether you're telling the truth or not, and just keep it to yourself which one you're actually rolling? So, what did you want me to roll with? Uh, an insight check. Uh, no conspiracy sure. as a foot. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> yeah. oh, fuck. <laughs> Ten. <laughs> sure. Um. Um. Hang on. Yeah. Uh. Fifteen. Okay. So, uh, Pavato, there is, uh, from what you can gather from your conversations you're having, you've got no reason, uh, to kind of distrust the words that Boris is saying and uh, for, for what you can tell they're telling the truth, nothing but the truth. All right. 
All right. <laughs> keep your secrets then. <laughs> All right. Keep your secrets. <laughs> cool. So, uh, is there anything else anybody would like to do before you actually turn in for the night? And, and how did how did Cut come to join our party? Is it Cut? It is Cut. Um, I was invited to join a peculiar drinking game. Ooh. Um, while we we're in the tavern, and the coin said I should, and here we are. The coin said you should. Ooh. Do you make all <laughs> your decisions by coin flip? Mostly. That's pretty cool. I like that. Sweet. Cool beans. So, uh, your turn for the night. Uh, is anybody being posted on watch? Uh, I can keep watch. If you yeah, want. Do you want to take yeah. the first watch? Wow. Well. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, Pavato, can you roll a perception check for me, please? I sure can. Seventeen. Cool. So, uh, your watch goes by uneventfully. Nothing happens. Uh, Ayana, could you roll a perception check for me, please? Sure can. Twelve. Cool. Your watch also goes by with that incident. So uh, you rise and uh, you wake up in the morning. Uh, everything's cool. Are you ready to continue? Yes. Yeah? Yeah, cool. let's do it. Beans. Let's get it. So meeting up with your trusty ponies, you examine the scarred oak cart to check that everything is in order. On the surface, at least, everything is accounted for. Pets, supplies, and your belongings are all as you left them. While there are footprints around the cart, it would appear Phil and Robin made enough commotion to scare any would-be thieves away. GG's Phil and Robin. <laughs> GG. <laughs> oh, <yes. laughs> for, for context, uh, there was little apprehension about leaving the cart uh, alone by itself kind of thing. Fearing okay. that trusted GM over here would, you know, have these ponies befell some terrible, terrible ordeal. <laughs> yeah. It's true. The ponies are, the ponies are safe. <laughs> well, that's good. I'm glad. All so, oh, good. So, uh, setting off, you reach a rolling terst fields by mid-afternoon and the, with the Taldore sun high in the sky. The outer ring of agriculture of the city of Westron, it feeds most of the region with crops, livestock and produce. In turn, they import many goods from other nearby cities, making, making it a bustling stop for trade caravans. The terst fields is one of the few communities in Taldore that counts gnolls among its citizens. So uh, for those who are with us with campaign one, or have managed to check along, so two gnolls, Dundar and Waff, were the creatures that you fought in the caverns, if you remember way back oh, when. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> yeah, a few of them have been adopted into society here. So many of the human halfing population have adopted the gnoll language and animalistic spirituality. You have entered the wider region known as the Dividing Plains. Uh, Ayana, can you make a history check for me, please? I sure can. <laughs> 10 okay so having grown up not too far away from here you try to recall a piece of information you heard from a story once however it doesn't come to you you find something in the back of your mind but it's just not uh, not enough bells are ringing for that one <laughs> <laughs> something about Ooh. this there <laughs> <laughs> taking the partridge way uh, once past the turf fields, you set off with thoughts of resupplying and taking in the sights and sound of the next city on your journey. You pass a signpost signaling that West Run is just a few miles further. Uh, okay, everything's good there. Uh, Badr, can you make an investigation check, please? I sure can. So I've got advantage on that as well. So the first one was a three, so that's bad. <laughs> But luckily we got advantage. Thanks so. for clarifying that was bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got 12 plus 3, so 15. Brilliant, brilliant. Please be excited. How are you, my friend? It's Benjamin hey, in the chat. Ben. With all the cheers. Look at all these cool people, he says. Let's give that a cheeky highlight. If that works. Yay, Yay. look at that. <laughs> That's cool. We did a thing. Uh, 15, did you say? Uh, yes. Perfect. So you spot that there is an inscription on the post of the sign, or the signpost even. A symbol has been carved into the wood with a blade. It's quite small, and by the similar weathering on the stump, it's been there for some time. Ayana, you recognize that this is the mark of the clasp. 
you know that there is a faction of the shadow organization here in West Rhine. You also notice the same look of recognition from Sky 2. It would appear that they've encountered the class before. Interesting. Hmm. Sky. Oh, no, it's... <laughs> One, That's it? pretty fucked, mate. Like, <laughs> 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 hey, is that all? All good? Yeah. We'll just keep the knowledge for now, you know, and stop yeah. pick up a fuss just You can do whatever you want, yeah, absolutely. I, yeah, I was just well, checking before I knew that. Yeah. Not going to storm the castle just yet. <laughs> <laughs> So, continuing on, your cart travels along the road with that incident, and you find that the city gates uh, are open to traders and travellers alike. There is substantial military presence here in the city, with some 800 trained soldiers, known as the Shields of the Plain, under the watchful eye of Maygrave, or Margrave Brandon Zimmerset. The de facto ruler of the city, Don Zimmer, as is known by the Shields, and his forces keep the guerrilla ravagers at bay from West Run. Uh, welcome everybody to the Zim Zone. Shout out to Erica McKenna, fans of the Bleep Face podcast. And yes, we've got Don Zimmer in a, D in a DD campaign. We did a thing. Yes. <laughs> Inside jokes all day, every day. All right then. So uh, passing through the gates, you find yourselves in the most southern point of the city, the market ward. This ward of the city campaign contains the majority of the businesses, trade stands and production warehouses. It is currently fashionable for many of the store owners to live in the apartments above their shops. However, the more adventurous have turned these residences into gambling dens, black market trading posts, and unlicensed brothels. And by the way, he's rubbing his yeah. hands. Love me <laughs> some gambling dens. Brothels. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> unlicensed, though. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Boris and Sky, can you both make perception checks for me, please? I can indeed. Sure. 11. Okay, good to know. 16. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. So, uh, Boris, looking at the faces of the people, the mood is grim. Others look desperately tired and depressed, as if something has been haunting and tormenting them. Sky, you notice there's a distinct lack of children here in the city. This is a stink like two like... here in the city. Yeah. <laughs> there are people, oh there are God, people looking right. around in the dark corners of alleyways as if they're desperately searching for something. Uh, is there anything you'd like to do with this information? Um... It's okay to say no. <laughs> yeah, I'll just I'll keep that for now. I'm just trying to think. Is it because we just can't see any children? Are there, can we like, see if any signs of child life? Maybe they're all at school. Like, are there any, like, football? <laughs> <time> or... it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's the middle of the day, but it is the weekend. So oh, okay, you, I didn't realize it's the weekend. Well, there are no youths about? That is suspicious, okay. Mm -hmm. If I no look, are there, are there any places that I would expect to see children, but they're missing? Like, maybe the town centre or... So a this stall. is it. So you're, you're in kind of the town centre of the market ward. So there's like stalls everywhere. There's uh, people bussing around, like going about their business, shopping and whatnot. But there's just no children around, and, and people looking really, really uh, depressed and like something. Can we ask someone? Around. Can we like talk to a local? Sure. Or would that be rude? You can do whatever. <laughs> Where's the children, mate? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> can I make a children check? <laughs> children check. Oh, God. Only if you want to go on a list. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would just want to like ask someone like, "Hey, how's it going? Like, what's what's, sure. what's so going on?" As soon on? as you do, uh, the person grabs your arm and says, "My child, my child. Have you seen oh. my child?" Okay. Oh, oh see, that, that's mm, that that's not good. Sorry, we haven't, but uh, we'll keep a look at what do they look like. You know, yay hi. Ginger hair. It sounds like you don't know what your own child looks like. I'm just going to roll the karma check for Sky. Give me a second. <laughs> can, can we ask when when you last saw the child? Yeah. Your child. Seven days ago at this point. Okay. Oh my god. Mm. Is anyone doing anything to help? Is there police? We we keep asking. We we ask the shields, and uh -huh. they haven't been able to do anything. Mm. Oh, okay. What, what, when did you last see them? Like, you, I know seven days ago, but like, what, what were they doing when, when you last? We saw were here. Them? We were shopping. And, and, and what happened? And I turned my back, and they were gone. Oh my goodness! 
Is this well? <laughs> I don't want to presume, but like, it seems like there's not a lot of children around it. So I'm guessing this might not be the first case of this happening. There's oh, at least a dozen families this has happened to. Um, and no one's doing anything. Yeah. Something suspicious is going to happen. She will say they're looking into it, but we haven't seen anything. All right. Oh, we'll, if we can do anything, kind sir, we'll try our best to thank return you, the children. So, ha- and I'll be with you. Thank you, Norris. It's very disconcerting. Mm. Oh, good. So, uh, turning your attention back to the market ward. The most significant building on the ward is the World Market. It's a marbled walled auction house where hundreds of vendors hawk rare and unusual items across Taldore. Uh, however, you notice that outside the auction house is a stall teeming with customers. Purple and deep blue silks adorn the stall, and from the sounds coming from the vicinity, they carry a, a mixture of desperation, relief, and anger. Uh, is there anything you would like to do, Ethnic Squares? Mm. You've got a thing you can sell. <laughs> Oh, the, the, yeah. the pelt. Well, what do we think? Do we want to sell the, the pelt? Do we know if it has any other use? I'm down I mean, for selling it's the a, pelt. It's a pelt of a wolf. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> could it be used in crafting or something? Yeah. It's a pelt of a human. <laughs> Does it have a... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, shit. We look back at the pelt of a bear and it's now just skin. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> A puddle of skin and bone, I think they call it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> does, does the pelt have any special properties? I.e. like, if we craft armor out of it, would that mean that regular, like, non-silver attacks won't work on make, us? Make an arcana problem? check for me. Oh, great. I have terrible <laughs> arcana. Actually, no, mine's pretty good. What? Mine's advantage as well on that. Hell yes. Uh, okay, well, first one's a 9, plus 3 is 12. Um... Next one's a 10 plus 3, 13. So at this point, uh, it is just the pelt of a bear that you have, effectively. But it is a lot of fur, and it could be made into a fine rug uh, for, for some people. Great. Okay, so no, no like melee deflecting armor can come out of this, at least to our knowledge. Sadly not, Monster Hunter. It's a negative. Great. Great. Could well, make a better sleeping bag for a long rest. It could do. Okay. I will say you haven't had a chance to wash this pelt yet. <laughs> Yeah. And also, only one of us can use it, and there's like seven of us, so like, it'd be kind of. I mean, it's a bear. It's over big. it. I mean, okay, maybe like two of us, but like. Oh. Um, right, maybe okay. we'll sell it then. We can buy our yeah. own suit we... bag. That's the yeah, one. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe sell, sell it. it. All right. If, if we're agreed, I'm happy to, to <laughs> put it up for auction. Okay. So uh, you go into the auction house, into the world market, and you find one of the traders. You say? <laughs> <laughs> oh. How, how uh, we would like to put this um, this spectacular fresh wear bear pelt up for auction? How how would we go about doing that? So uh, they take the pelt from you and give an inspection. And first thing they don't, say is, "Don't smell it! Don't smell it!" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this first rate superior wear bear hide or pelt just... freshly cleaned <laughs> yeah. so, just, just, please, just for the record say... as we're talking to this trader Bajra is just mumbling things about how spectacular <laughs> the pelt is yeah. okay. very rare good to know, good to know. I, did, I did roll a nat 20 for um, removing it you did, uh, yes. So uh, they, they say that, uh, yes, <laughs> removing it, it's, it's all good. Yeah, so they say it's a very fine example. It's, it's got a few it's got a few claw marks on the side and one of its eyes are missing. Wow, it's going to take the value down out. a little bit, but let me see what I can do. And he goes back to his kind of abacus, starts shifting. And the eyes uh, attached to the pelt. <laughs> <laughs> eyes would usually be still in the pelt, but okay. No. <laughs> This one comes with an eye. Value <laughs> <laughs> for, for money. So uh, they say they will offer you ninety gold per, per pieces for it. Each. Oh. <laughs> Each. <laughs> <laughs> what up, Paul? Good to see. You. Can we? Um, is there any kind of check we can make to know if that's a good deal? 
Uh, sure, roll an insight check for me. What was the deal my internet cut out? <laughs> Alright, who, who wants to roll an insight check? Because mine's terrible. Mm, I can do it. Okay, good, good, good. Fifteen. Okay, uh, it seems a fair price. How about we make it a nice round 100 gold coins? <laughs> okay, are you doing this menacingly or friendly? Friendly, friendly. <laughs> Come on, just like, hey, <laughs> let's, let's round it up, make it a nice round. <laughs> Roll coins. a persuasion check for me. So if you're doing it with some like meanness to it, it'd be intimidation check. But as you're doing it friendly. Yeah. Okay. What's, your pers what's your persuasion? I've My got persuasion. plus seven. Oh. Oh, pfft, you should definitely do it. <laughs> I, mean, I was thinking maybe, uh, depending on who the seller is, maybe we have a little something, something. Let me try. <laughs> Let's, uh, not many people survive a wear bear attack. And uh, we think that there will be, I know on the market, there's a lot of people out there that would be really interested in this. So uh, let's see what, what we can do here. Sure. 15. How about 95? We meet in the middle. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty fine. Let's, let's just... Okay, so if the treasurer could add 95 gold pieces to their pot. Guys, I'm adding 100. All... <laughs> <laughs> I'm making XP away. I'm a slide of hand check. What, to kind of reach in into his pocket and extract some gold? <laughs> to produce five extra gold. Hey, so Ayanna has the arms of Mr. Tickle. <laughs> <laughs> Who's to say I can't do that? This is it. I mean, your character sheet has kind of a thing on it that says you can't, but yeah, <laughs> sure, why not? <laughs> okay, are we done with the auction house? Do they have a brochure of things that are coming up for auction? Ooh, like, yeah. um, or like, so you can see like all the artifacts or somewhere there on display. I just like to look. Sure, we can, we can, give, we can give you one of those. Uh, I'll okay. produce one in, in between the weeks. <laughs> so for the next session, we'll have, we'll have a series of artifacts and their prices, don't you worry. Okay. Uh, you don't have to make cool. a brochure. Just something to... It's fine now. It's done. It's done. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? You might be actually... Uh, you'll be able to afford a few pieces from it. Uh, but it is all good. So we will say, uh, for the sake of brevity, that you uh, leave the, wall, uh, the auction house and you turn your attention back to the stall uh, team room customers uh, with a mix of desperation, relief, and anger coming from the stall. Uh, the silk line stall is adorned with an intricately painted sign, uh, a neuromancy uh, de l'estrella, uh, picked out in fine silver letterings. Sat behind the stall are a pair of twin tieflings assisting the crowd of people uh, around the stall. Uh, along with uh, how their stall design complements their blue complexion beautifully, you see that each tiefling only has one horn apiece. Uh, from the jewellery uh, hung from each of their horns and the rings on their fingers and the quality of their attire, you get the impression they are very successful in their craft. And that's right, ladies and gentlemen, we have, an <laughs> we have another NPC named after one of our best friends. So uh, shout out to you, Tiff, and hope you're doing all different kinds of well. Uh, Moving your way through the, uh, through the people to get a better look at what's going on, you see that the twins have a collection of crystals, cards, and divination orbs and scrolls on their stand. The twin on the left is drawing from a set of tarot cards to determine the fate of a customer, while the second tiefling is examining the notes of a dream diary. It is this point you notice a few of the crowd chanting abuse directed at the twins. And one of them goes, Charlatans! Don't listen to these hellish fiends! For weeks they've been here poisoning our minds and thoughts! A second member of the crowd follows up, my child, where are our children? You cursed us with these nightmares and ill fortune. Now our children have been snatched from their beds. These thieves are behind it and no one's doing anything about it. More and more voices of anger and desperation ring out from the crowd. The scale of the torment suffered by these people of Western is becoming clearer with every irate customer. It would appear that several children have been kidnapped and their parents, already distraught, have been burdened with terrible thoughts and visions too. The crisis charlatan and witchcraft and monsters are only slightly balanced out by those who respect the mystic arts of the Lestrella twins. <laughs> Paul says, oh wow, this got dark. <laughs> just you wait, my friend, just you wait. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> you catch the twins giving each other a knowing look and realise that today uh, it might be wise to close up, or close up early. Uh, looking around, it would seem that the Lestrella twins are the only company of its kind in the market ward and perhaps in Westrun. 
the tieflings are surprisingly adept at closing their stall with speed and efficiency, like it was a common occurrence for them. They quickly draw the drapes across the stall and, and disappear from view. Uh, uh, cool. Uh, Mr. Pavato, can you make a perception check for me, please? I can. Uh, I think. <laughs> and your skill is my yeah, favorite. yeah, yeah. Sure. Um, Eleven. Paul, Paul had a change of heart. Eleven. Okay, good to know. He said, "Maybe I'll flirt with the shopkeeper." Thirty seconds later, they're stealing my babies. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So, from the corner of your eye, you see the twins emerge from a dimension door down an alleyway. You see the crowd of people open the drapes of the stall to demand the twins return their children and rid them of their nightmares. Uh, what would you like to do? Well, I'll tell the party where you saw that the cool. twins are probably stealing the babies. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you saw, you've, seen, you've seen them down an, an alleyway? Yeah. Guys, I think we should check out what's going on behind here. I think something yeah, fishy is going on. Yeah, we did promise that person that we would try and look into this, and this seems like a lead. So yeah, that's maybe nice. we should go into the old alleyway and uh, see what these uh, see what these two are up to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Much like the Scooby Doo gang, a mystery is afoot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so as you approach, uh, one of the tieflings says, "Stay back! We don't have your children." The second <laughs> tiefling is quick to follow. My sister and I are only here to help the people understand the visions that torment them. Hmm. Do you, okay. Can we ask them? So, do you know anything about the children that have gone missing? We don't know their names. We don't know their. We don't know who they are. We just know that people are, are sad around here, and we're trying to help. Is there like an age at which, like, people they're considered children? Like, like what's the youngest? Do you know what oh, question so, I'm trying to ask? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, like, really uh, exactly. a person would usually reach maturehood around about uh, seventeen, eighteen. Oh, so anybody under the age of seventeen is getting kidnapped? Uh, yeah, a I mean, bunch they, of them are they don't know. They wouldn't necessarily know who these people are, so they wouldn't be able to like oh. put it on a graph to say it's only people under ten or that kind of thing. It's just okay. children. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. And how long have these tieflings been in town? How long have they been in town? A few weeks. Uh, so they arrive a few weeks ago, and then seven days later. All the kids start disappearing. And they said that they... Hmm. <laughs> so they, they said that they were here Pro to help and people. Don't ever be an interrogation stand against Rahulu. <laughs> <laughs> so they said that they were here to help the people figure out what their visions, like what, what the meaning of the visions that were tormenting them were. But the time they arrived, the kids were still there. So what were the visions about? That's what they claim. Mm, can we roll a... Um, you can it, roll insight check, it... absolutely. Oh no, I, I've got shit insight. But <laughs> I whisper ask. this you're information the one, You're the one saying Sky. all these theories, my friend. You <laughs> I <roll>. whisper <laughs> these theories to Sky and say, <laughs> I think you should roll an insight. Well, <laughs> funny enough, Badra, uh, in the city of Whitestone, when you was having uh, dinner at Winter's Crest Festival with Vox Machina, they did gift you a set of earrings each and every one of you, which allows you to kind of communicate over vast different uh, distances up to 500 feet oh. away. So oh. you wouldn't necessarily have to yell across the battlefield anymore. <laughs> oh, oh great. great. Well, I can say that my insight is a plus three. Does anybody else have higher? <laughs> I have higher. Um, can I ask them, as I'm trying to work out whether they're telling the truth, what, um, what sort of visions are people coming to you with? So uh, they open up a one of their dream diaries and uh, they show you some of the notes and it is all uh, terrible, dark uh, stuff of uh, demons coming to attack them in the middle of the night. It's all shadows and smoke and ash. Mm. And my insight is 21. Okay, uh, as far as you, you can tell, they are telling the truth. Mm. Guys, you think it has something to do with that symbol that we saw like on the way into town? Not the clasp. <laughs> I don't know who the clasp are. No, me. Right? So, 
It's at this point when one of the shields of the plane approaches you with great axe in hand. They believe you are harassing the Lestrada twins and protect, pr to protect them. The guard steps in between you and the tieflings. Neo, you spot that Nyx has been moving her things in a manner that is not unlike she was casting a spell. And the guard says, Can I ask you what you're doing troubling these Wait, two? Wait, sorry, who's Nyx? Uh, Nyx is one of the tieflings. Okay, all right, okay. Sorry. It's all good. So a guard, a guard has asked oh, yeah. the whole party, Can I ask what you're doing troubling these two? Ah, uh, we're just chatting. It's all good, mate. Yeah, we're just we're just yeah. wondering what's going on and why they were getting all this abuse from the crowd. We were, we were he just, cuts you know, across you, going, leave it, eh! I've had to come here and stop this mob from lynching this pair more than once. Shields have been struggling to keep the Ravengers at bay east of the city. Don't need you lot causing any more trouble now, do I? We're not. We're, we're just. We're just travelers wandering. What's going on? We're not causing any trouble. You can ask Careful, the. Roger, this the, is how we get oh, thrown in jail. Yeah. <laughs> you can ask the tieflings. We're, we've not been, you know, harassing them. We've just been asking what's going on, right, tieflings? <laughs> roll, roll an intimidation check for me. Oh, I'm not intimidating them. I'm, we've like, oh, fine. That was intimidating as shit, Badger. <laughs> oh god. He says, gripping the hand of his glaive. Okay. Fifteen plus one. Yeah. So uh, the the tieflings explain. Uh, you know. Yeah, they, they, they weren't harassing this officer. It, it, it's all good. Uh, Nua does pipe up that she still doesn't trust them, though. She knows the spell when she sees one. Mm. However, we will say that over the next five minutes, Nyx and Viral, so these are the names of the tieflings, explain what their leading theories are. They're adamant to remove themselves from the line of questioning and accusation, possibly for one bad revolt reaver. <laughs> 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 they have been passing the city and offered their services. When they discovered just how many people we need, they set up a stall and business has been booming ever since. Uh, they explain that they leave the city every now and then in fear of their lives. Cedric Freeman, so he's the name of the guard, uh, comments that the people claim that, uh, that people claim the twins leave to move the children they've been kidnapped once they've been snatched and the parents' minds have been poisoned. Keen to bring this disaster to an end, Nix and Viral offer to lend their services to you. Anthony Squares, what say you? Oh my god, what, they're going to read our dreams and, or they're going to do a reading? No, so they, they've got services, but they want to they wanna bring this uh, episode of, of Terror and Torment of the City to an end as much as you do to save this one child of this person you spoke to. Uh, so they're, they're offering to team up in this instance. Oh, as in they're going to join our party? Mm-hmm. Interesting. Ooh, I don't know. Uh, um, Neo said she doesn't really trust them, so... But she says uh, this could be a trap, but she's been wrong before. But how, but this is the same Newer who ran up a hill <laughs> to take on some Dragonfire Slayers just last soldiers last campaign. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> mm. Okay, can mm. hey, I mean Pat, what does your coin say? <laughs> Ooh, no. Trust um, in the coin. So Eyes, we trust them. Skulls, we don't. Sounds good. Skulls. Ooh. All right. But if they if they come with us, then we can keep an eye on them. Ooh, yes. Ooh. Enemies, friends close, enemies closer. I <laughs> yeah. like it. I like it. Okay. Ooh. Yeah, can, can, say, can, can we bring them as prisoners? <laughs> 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 oh, now who's intimidating? <laughs> uh, it, the really? Is the time guard still there? I don't think they'll let us. Yeah. <laughs> I think. Okay, so let's 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 just co go over the evidence, right? We rolled uh, an insight check, and they seem to be telling the truth, mm -hmm. and. That's the only evidence I have. Yeah. <laughs> Apart from the fact that Neo saw them casting some kind of spell, mm -hmm. which we don't know. So, I mean, I mean that's the one they saw in the whole world of roleplay. Wait, what? I mean, you, you you have the ability to ask these people, "What the heck were you doing with your hands?" Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Can well, as as Neo was the one that noticed it, can Neo yeah. ask like what what 
that was. Sure. So Nick says it was just a nervous switch. I wasn't sure what he was about to what you were about to do. I see you're heavily armed. Mm. Mm. Okay. I, I mean, I do like the idea of keeping your enemies closer, you know, so we can keep an eye on them. So I guess for, uh, we can we can let them tag along, but we can all be very suspicious in our minds. <laughs> so we'll say for the sake that you whisper this all over the earpiece. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Vadra's just shouting it down the alleyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oi, just <laughs> FYI, we are suspicious as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Alright then, so... Uh, do, do, do. Cedric leads you all to his office, where there's a map of the region. With a collection of stones, crystals, and divining instruments, Nix and Vera will pour over the map, marking, making intricate markings and ruling out certain areas. As they close in on a potential location, their speech becomes more energetic and excited. They begin to converse in Draconic, which Neo is also fluent in. What she translates back to you in common, it would seem there is a dark energy leading from a well here in the city. Ooh. Wait, the Lestrella Timmy twins. Down the well. <laughs> Might be more than just yeah. a Timmy. <laughs> <laughs> the Lestrella twins uh, lead you through a series of alleyways in the market ward to a small square with a stone well. Uh, the square is currently isolated, and both Nix and Viral describe that there was dark presence and an aura coming from the well. They ask Cedric what lies underneath the city. He takes a moment to think before uh, before he he says he isn't quite sure. Uh, what would you like to do? Can I find a small stone and just throw it down the well and oh, see what oh, happens? Oh, I have ball bearings. Let, let me drop a ball oh. bearing down the well. Oh, do it, do it, do it. <laughs> sure. Uh, so how many ball bearings would you like to drop? <laughs> <laughs> what are the ball bearings do, by the way? <laughs> they make I a just... sound when it touched the ground roll. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sweet. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah I'm just going to drop one. Yeah? Yeah, okay. I have so you listen intently left. as you drop one ball bearing. <laughs> uh, you hear it ping off the ground, but then that's it. This is very faint because you only drop one, and it's quite a distance. All right, but there's a bottom to it as well. That's cool. There is a bottom to it. Could I do a similar thing, but I want to light a match and drop it down because mm, I sure. have excellent eyesight. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna see whether that shows me anything. Nice. So as you take the match and you light it and you drop it down uh, the well, uh, you get the sense that the well goes on for around about 60 feet and then uh, the match goes into darkness because it hits the ground. But hang on, if the ball bearing and the match are hitting the ground, the well is empty. There's no water in this well. <gasps> so I guess I'll ask the tank, what's the well for? Who used to used to feed the city with water? Mm. How long ago was that? Uh, since the age of calamity, since before then. So, <sighs> oh, a long time. Okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're not we're not talking last month or something. Correct. Mm -hmm. What kind of sound did the ball bearing make when it hit the floor? <laughs> what sound is gonna make? <laughs> oh no, I wonder if it was like the sound of both. Was it like a sploosh or was oh, it like yeah. a I'm not sure you'd be able to tell that just from dropping one ball bearing. <laughs> yeah, but you well, could Jesse, like, and Jesse, and Jesse the found it fell like a clown horn and went, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I'm not sure what you wanted. <laughs> no no no, but it's the difference between it hitting like, you know, a stone floor or yeah. a yeah, mud so you can floor. tell you can tell there's a there's a stone floor in there. It, I'm it wondering if there's bodies in the world. Water. Because that would have made a squishy sound if the stone had hit some bodies. Correct. But yeah, you, you can tell that the from, from what you can gather from the match and the ball bearing, there is a stone floor to this okay. well. Oh, all right. Okay. Maybe it's a secret entrance. <laughs> so you do see that there is a, a series of handholds that can be used as a ladder going down as well. <gasps> and there is a secret entrance. Are we, are we going down, Doggy Dog? Secret tunnel. <laughs> For all your Avatar fans it's a on there. Secret <laughs> underground network, perhaps. This is the city of secrets, isn't it? Yeah. Secrets. Oh my god, I think 
someone's climbing down that well yeah. and checking out the bottom. Well, well, well. <laughs> <laughs> if it isn't the consequences of my own actions. Lucy, that is exactly how I named this chapter. I thought, of, I thought of that sunny line of him just going, well, well, well. Yeah. <laughs> oh. well right, are we, are we, are we firing straws? And Johnny feels so depressed. I hope you feel better soon. Thank you very much for the follow. Are we drawing straws? Who's going uh, down? <laughs> I'll go down. I don't need to draw straws. Okay, so uh, taking the ladder down deep beneath the city, you arrive at a series of waterways that channel fresh water and sewage in and out of West Run. Cedric stays above ground to stand guard, and apparently so does the rest of the ethnic squares. Uh, you explore for a good 20 minutes following the instructions of the twins until you reach an exploded wall. This hole leads to a network of caves. Listening closely, you can all hear the sound of a rock being oh mined. Oh my god, this is some Indiana Jones like the children <laughs> are like mining <laughs> diamonds. Yeah. 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 Dear God. All right, at this point, I feel like I I run back to the, the well entrance. I'm like, hey guys, there's something in your ear down yes, here. You got earrings, you guys, man. Oh yeah, we've got <laughs> earrings. Yeah. You guys should come join me so I'm not here by myself with the the two tieflings who may who you may or may not trust and may or may not try to murder me and steal all our gold. I'm down. I'm I'm in the well now. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I, I go down too. Sweet. Okay, so we're all there listening to the sound of rock being mined. Yeah. Are the twins with us or are the yes, twins? They've come down okay. with you. So uh they went down at the same time as, as Babara to kind of uh use their divining rods and that could have gone horribly wrong. Direct <laughs> they could have gone murdered in these underground waterways. Well I did roll for something and they didn't do the thing that they were gonna do if they made the succeed. <laughs> if oh they made the succeed. Oh shit. <laughs> Jesus Christ. We don't trust I'm joking, them. The I'm joking. Said not to trust them. Yes. Trust they were just gonna try and point. crack onto Badra. It's okay. Sure. So, uh <laughs> The, the whole part is down the well, right? And you, you followed uh, the instructions of Badra, and you're at this uh, hole in the wall, as it were. Mm -hmm. uh, can someone make an investigation check, please? I can do that. Sure. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. Six. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Okay, oh. That, that's just enough. DC was five. DC was five. You're fine. So, oh, okay. <laughs> you find a pair of broken manacles on the floor of this cave. They look small in size, too small for your typical adult. As you take a look, you see the small form of a child emerge in your view. The chains of their bonds are still around their neck, and you clearly see that they've been stuck in here for weeks, uh, with little to no food. Staggering forward, they only utter a single word to you before collapsing in your arms, and that word is ONI. O-N-I. They're using them as workers! Yeah. Oh my god. Slavers are in. Cut. Uh, can you make a history check for me, please? Yes, you can. You're not very good. A uh, six. You're fine. So, from your studies in the monastery, you recall reading about creatures known as Oni. You know them to be very dangerous beings, capable of controlling people and bending them to their will. Their spellcasting ability is equal to their proficiency with the bladed weapons, too. You would be wise to tread very carefully. I see that. What do you think? Leroy Jenkins! <laughs> 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 Hey, so you quickly put together the events that conspires here, where all the ch children disappeared to and the torment that they have been subject to. With the parents being subjected to visions of nightmares, there are no fit state to help or mount a rescue. Venturing into the caves, the sound of pickaxes hitting rocks only grow louder with every new cavern that you enter. Are we all good? Anybody want to prep anything? Mm -hmm. um, Alright. I'm I I ready my bow, so I'm ready to fire. If something comes at us, sure. <laughs> Robin's about uh, to shoot I believe shoot a your dark would be sixty feet. <laughs> Cut. All right. And I, I might as well cast a crimson oh, yeah. right on my glaive, just in preparation. Okay. Good to know. Also, question to the for the party, I guess. Do you think it's worth telling Cedric, who's standing guard, that we found the kids that were missing, or we we presume these are the missing kids? Like or well, you found one of them. Well, yeah, oh, we found gonna... one, but we can hear the sounds of many. Oh well, what we think is the sounds of many. So, so okay. the, the the one we found, um, I'm gonna look around the party and say, is anyone who is more knowledgeable in magic with me confirm that this is definitely a child? Oh, oh, I make sure it's not. I don't know, an only in disguise or something. 
Ooh, that's a good shout. I don't have... I've got... What would that be? Would perception be... Uh, that would be making an arcana check to see if there's any... Or if you've got a detect magic as a spell. I've got arcana advantage and plus three, so I can roll for that. Yeah, let's try to try roll. Is that, that cool? It's up to you. you, you I, I, I'm going to roll for that. All right, <laughs> All right 18 plus three, 21. The new Hall and Ode signal. I can roll for that. Uh, what was it, Faye? Uh, 18, so 21. Sure. Uh, yeah, there's there's uh, no funny business with this kid. This kid is just one malnourished uh, poor child who's been subjected to weeks of torment. God, that's He's one of those dumb kids. In that <laughs> <laughs> one of the dumb kids who got themselves caught. <laughs> Um, Boris so we'll say break. we'll say for the for the sake of purposes that uh, a new O goes running back to the entrance and shouts up and signals uh, Cedric and she goes Ceders we find the kids they're down here. Uh, All right, cool. So that job is done. Cool. So the the unconscious kid is being taken care of now, or because otherwise oh, Boris would gather up the that child and carry them back but if someone's on their way to play them that's fine sure we said that happens yeah cool 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 so uh you you soon enter a cave lit by mineral formations where you imagine the kidnapped children have been forced into mining while there are no children in the immediate vicinity you do hear the sounds of them working tirelessly nearby twins are suddenly frozen with fear and their eyes change from a brilliant purple to pure white they slowly turn to face you with their weapons drawn, seemingly against their will. You notice a shadowy form materialize in the near distance, and you hear a voice says, Who enters my domain? Oh. These mines belong to me. I offer you one chance to leave before my steel will taste your blood. Well, we have no And Neo says, Ah, curse your sudden but inevitable betrayal to the <laughs> thing. <laughs> <laughs> If you are all good, it is that time again. Can I get you all to roll initiative for it's go time? Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. Here is our battle map that we have. If you give it a sec. Uh, so we have the Oni here, and we have Nyx, and we have uh, Viral here. Wait, we have to fight them? But they were taken over. Yeah, yeah they were they were taken over by the Oni. So we don't oh, so kill that... them. Yeah, oh. we just go for the Oni. Oh, okay, okay. Or we make them a unless you, don't, unless you want to slot them all. It's up to you. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was just checking. Okay, uh, 25 to 20. Anybody in that range? Yeah, I got 20. 18. Nice. Oh no, that's the other side. Sorry. No, that's fine. <laughs> Uh, so sorry, that was 20 for Sky, right? No, for Jesse. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Good. And then uh, 20 to 15. 18. <laughs> okay. 18 for Cut. Uh, and then Nuo got 15. Uh, 15 to 10, got... anybody? I got 15 yep. as well. Did you get that? Sure did. I got 12. Oh, that's been weird, so. You're fine. I got 14. Uh, 14 for Pavato. Uh, and then you say you got 12, Badra? Yes. Cool. I got 7 because I have no world smarts. <laughs> <laughs> You're fine. So, uh, so what's that? 20, 12. Uh, 14, 18, uh, 70, did you say? Sky? Yes, 7. Good to know. Uh, that's fine, just making sure we've got everybody. So, uh, next goes then, and then it is Sky with 7 for Sky, and then bringing up the tail end of the order, it is Viral with the <coughs> initiative roll of 2. So, uh, Top of the round, Ayana, it is on you. What would you like to do? Do I have a clear shot at the Oni? Can I make uh, my party back? You would hit uh, Nyx first. I will say that much. 
Damn. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I figured. Mm. I don't like going fast. <laughs> <laughs> Screw you and your high initiative rolls. <laughs> <laughs> Um, can I move and get a better shot? Because I don't really want to attack Nyx or Beryl. Sure, what's your movement speed? Uh, three. Okay, so uh, we can move you to one, two, you can move up to here. Uh, you are still not necessarily, you could, you still don't have a clear line of sight on uh, only, but I, I would say if you make your attack roll at disadvantage, then I will give you a shot at only. Okay. Uh, yeah. Oh, Are you that. firing your bolt or your? Uh, Are you throwing a dagger? Uh, my I'm using my bow, so. And I imagine your regular bolts, right? Yes. Rather than your silvered ones. Yes. So. Um, seven. So thirteen to hit. Okay, unfortunately, I was going to miss. All right. But it's not cool. so bad that you hit next. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. <laughs> okay, right. it isn't. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to do? No. Try to hide or anything, or is there anything to hide behind? Not really, but I thought I'd be. Yeah. Able, I can ask a question anyway. I, that's what I thought. <laughs> that's what I thought. No, it's all good. Okay, uh, now it's the turn of the Oni. Uh, ba -ba -ba -da. So, they are going to cast uh, from their position uh, Cone of Cold. Uh, so actually, they're going to move mm. first. Uh, to go one, two, three, up to here. Uh, so, can... Uh, Badra, Cut, Ayana, Sky, and Boris make a Constitution saving throw, please. So this is different from a Constitution check. Sixteen. Good to know. Six four. Five. Okay. So, uh, Badra Ten. and Cut and Sky, uh, you are going to take full damage. Everybody else takes half damage of 8d8 of cold. Uh, so let's just roll that. Three. Oh. Eleven. That's a lot of dice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, 31 points of damage. Uh, full and half of that, so 15 points uh, for those who may to succeed their throw. Jesus. I think I'm, that's me down. I've only got 31 health points in total. Then you fall unconscious. <laughs> no. Oh, no. Shit. That's terrible. Why has I got so little health? It's okay. New only has 19 HP, so it's not that bad. Oh, damn. Thank you very much for the sub, Paul. Appreciate you. Uh, cool. So we will say, in the build-up to this, Nuo used one of her spell slots to cast uh, Mage Armor on herself to make herself less squishy, as you would say. <laughs> uh, so I'll add that, and it just gives a boost to her armor class. Mm -hmm. So we'll say... Uh, ba -da -ba -da. Cool. That is going to be the Oni's turn. Uh, cut. It is now on you. What would you like to do? Um. So Sky's out unconscious sky's at the down. moment, but everybody else is still. Yeah. I, I can't. I can't reach from where I am, though. Can I? I'd have to move a tiny bit. Uh, you can. You can move to Sky to administer a potion or whatever it is, unless um, you want to run up to the Oni and deal out some damage. So as an action, I expend one key point to touch a creature and restore 1d6 plus 3 hit points. Sure. So that would be my action. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll use a bit of my movement to go up, do that as my action. Sure. Um, 1d6 
six plus three. I'm gonna use an actual dice. Big money, no whammies. If I got a d6, if I got a d6, yeah, we go. So four plus three, which is seven. Seven. Great stuff. So Sky, you are prone, but you are no longer dying. <laughs> you have seven <laughs> points. Oh, how do I add that back so to it my It will football? take half your movement speed to get back up again. Okay. But that's to worry about. At least next. I still have a, some kind of pulse. Yes. Yeah. yeah well, you're awake. You're, you're conscious again. Oh, uh, God. Uh, but, 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 but is there anything else you'd like to do with your turn? Would you like to move back? Um, so I can, like, you can still, I can still hit, but I don't know if I got the, the range. Is it every square 10? Yes. Um, uh, was your action not to 10. hit, or was that a bonus action? Well, I think that, that was a action. Yeah. It does so say something about using my flurry of bow, blows, blows, to use that feature, but I feel like I have to be, like, punching some people and healing others. I don't quite understand it. Sure. Anyway. Okay, no worries. It's okay. <laughs> but that, that's going to be my action. Um. But then I want to kind of get close again. Maybe not quite in melee, but like close enough sure, so can, I could be in melee in my next here. turn. Yeah? Yeah, that sounds good. Uh, cool. It is now uh, Nuo's turn. And with her fully replenished set of spell slots. Let's just do that. Uh, right, you are no longer squishy. So let's take that off. Uh, she is going to cast a uh, magic missile at fourth level. Nice. And the Oni. And deal a maximum of 25 points of damage. Sweet. Hell yeah. We are off and running. Do, 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 do. Uh, she's going to stay where she is. Uh, so, because she's fine attacking from range. Uh, Boris, it is now your turn. What would you like to do? Okay. Um, I would like to rage. <laughs> nice. <laughs> 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 I think, because I've got 40 feet of movement, I think I can reach the Oni. Yeah, you can. Before they're directly south. Of, yeah. Okay, so I'd like to go up. I'm not going to recklessly attack, though, because that would really hurt, potentially. Um, but I will get out my longsword and um double attack it's sure uh with that oh 14 14 to hit yeah unfortunately that misses oh, on the first no. do you want to land uh do you get another slash slot of that or i, I do oh yeah i do because i get two attacks um yeah that's worse 11 <laughs> that's gonna miss as well i'm afraid yeah. so yeah. Uh, yeah, both your attacks miss. Uh, is there anything else you can do or would like to do on your turn? Um, no, that's everything. The only thing is, could I, if I had the movement, I'd move to the square directly below the only, rather, so then I'm only meleeing with one of the twins, not both of them. Uh, okay. Sure, we'll let you do that. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Thank you. So we put you here. Okay, good to know. Uh, Pavato is now on you. What do you have to do? Uh, do I have a clear shot on the Oni? Or... Uh, no, not really. You would if you move up like 10 feet or so. Yeah, let's do that then. Sure. So you move up uh, to here. Uh, you have a shot. Uh, and then you're making this at disadvantage, I think. Yeah. And first I cast Hunter's Mark on it. Sure. Good to know. Uh, and then, Although, ba ba uh, while this is happening, Bardra just whispers to everyone through the earpieces. It's not your turn. Like, you can't whisper oh. on your turn. What? <laughs> What's the point of having them? <laughs> so, you, if you're fighting against a dragon that's making a racket, then you can hear each other from like 500 feet away. Right. Uh, on, yeah. Okay. And then I try and take a shot at the. Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, make an attack with disadvantage, please. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So that's 21 to hit. Awesome. Uh, that hits. Yeah. 
and then over oh, damage, damage yeah nine and then hot this mark so 12 damage okay so another three fine does mark yeah mm -hmm. and then i have two attacks per turn since i have uh, yeah you do so uh yeah So, so 22 it. Yep, that hits again. Well done. Awesome. It's a nine plus Hunter's Mark. Another 13 points of damage. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Can you guess how many hit points is on when I say nice, nice, nice? Uh, okay. <laughs> 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 Badra, it is on you. What would yeah. you like to do? Right. Oh, sorry, are you doing anything else, Bavato? No, I was just going to say that's the end of my turn. Sure. Uh, Badra, it is now on you. What would you like um, to do or say? I was just going to say, based on the previous attack, I think we should not all group together yeah. just because he can he can take out a bunch of us super quick. Um, but yeah, that, that's all I wanted to say. But yeah, so for my action i can so each square is 10 feet right mm -hmm. correct so that's one two three hmm. okay so i will say you can issue a instruction or like ask politely cut to duck if you want to attack with your uh cross bolt or short bolt or whatever it's called uh no no so what i was thinking um so basically i want to move like so for my movement, I want to go kind of like slightly above um, cut. Okay. So, like so what's your movement three. speed? It's thirty feet. So if I if I move like on, sort of diagonally, three diagonally up once, yeah. So about there. Uh -huh. Then for my action, I'm gonna cast. So what uh, you could do, you have two actions per turn, right? Yes. So what you could well, do is no, you I've, your... just got an, I've just got an extra attack. I don't think I've got two actions. Oh, okay, fair enough. That's fine. You can you can use that action to dash and move again to be within melee range for the next time round. It's up to you. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't. Ba well, basically, so I'm gonna for my for my action, I'm gonna cast a spell, a blood curse called Blood Curse of the Marked. So sure. basically, whenever. I whenever that creature takes any right damage, like from my crimson right, it's like I get to roll the damage twice. Sure. Does so that have any ill effects on yourself? No. It just says you can mark a creature you can see within thirty feet of you, and oh wait, until the end of your turn, whenever you deal right damage. Oh, so there's no point. Okay, never mind. Forget that. That's uh, that's okay. gonna wear off at the end of the turn. Um, in that case, yeah, I'll just dash to be in melee range for next time. Sure. Okay. That's sort so of like are... here. Oh wait, can can I not dash? Like how 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 far can you dash? Uh, the same amount of your movement speed. Thirty feet. I don't think. So... Can... Yeah, I don't oh. think you can get over the top. <laughs> you can get oh, to like well... here. Okay, yeah, that's fine. You need to get to here or where you were in between. No, no, no. Uh, we'll go above. Um, we'll go above Nix. Yeah, that's fine. Cool. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's good. Uh, okay then. So it is Nix's turn. Uh, they are going to cast uh, magic missile at third level. On who are they going to attack? They are going to attack. Uh, ba -ba -ba Let's roll to see who we're going to attack. Unlucky Ayana. So, uh, that is uh, 20 points of damage to you, Ayana. Uh, no, I refuse. <laughs> 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 uh, I believe I can uh, uncanny dodge. You can uncanny and, dodge. At, and half the, half the attack, so that's only 10. Sure, damage. so 10 points of damage. Thank you. <laughs> nice. <laughs> You've uh, activated my trap card. <laughs> Uncanny dodge. Uh, they are going to use their movement to move up to here. 
Uh, that is next attempt. Sky, you are up. You are, well, it's your turn. <laughs> you are not up. You are, you're prone on the ground, yes. but you are awake and ready to do whatever it is you'd like to do. Uh, it's Badger in melee then. Would Badger got an attack of opportunity if Nyx... Oh, yes. Yes, they would. would. Uh, Badger. But do Good. I want to attack oh, Nyx? So... It's up to you. No, it's an uh, option. I feel like, yeah, I feel like we should just leave him be. He seems to be running away as well. <laughs> Nix is coming back with an army of children. <laughs> no! Oh. Mind controlled children. <laughs> that's fine. If we just got to take out. I mean, I presume, although that's a dangerous thing to say, but if we kill the Oni, then these two will no longer be under his control. That's what At I'm least, hoping. That's what I'm yeah. imagining. I say I presume that. That could be a terrible mistake. <laughs> but we'll see. <laughs> Sky, what would you like to do on your turn? Uh, what can I do? Because obviously I've got seven points of health, so I'm not, not looking too hot. You can uh, heal yourself if you'd like. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Like, Could I use one of my spells? So you can take I... a potion, or you can yeah, you can cast uh, Cure Wounds on yourself, or Healing Touch, oh, whatever it is. <laughs> okay, yeah. Can I do one of those then, please? Sure, I yeah. Are you gonna see I don't know what I'd take that for. Yeah, what am I going to do? Are you going to sing while you do this? Big oh, your heart, okay, or? yeah, sure. Heal it, heal it, heal it, no! Yes! And then I can just rise up and do a little Michael Jackson. Awesome. As a girl. So, uh, as Best a spell, you should, you should see the, yeah. the the number you have to click on. Yeah. Which level and do I do? should tell you how many points so you heal. these levels. It depends what whichever level you want like to do it on. Like, first, second, third. Oh, the higher does, it, the level, does it cost more? Yeah, so you just have fewer slots at the high level you go. So you might only have three third level slots, but you've got like four level two slots, that kind of thing. Okay, maybe I'll do level three and hope for the best. Okay, sure. I'm going to press a button, see what happens. Yep. <laughs> you healed one point of damage. <laughs> oh. uh, I got 19. There you go, add it to your okay. HP total then. Oh, that's what I get. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, what's seven plus 19? 26. Thank you. There you go. Oh, that's that's math fucking healthy. Okay. Uh, is that all I got? Or can so I maybe move used... away a bit? So, yeah, like, yeah. so you, move, you use half your movement speed to get up. Uh, okay. Where would you, which direction would you like to go in? Let's go... In north, east, west. Let's go north because we're all clustered a bit. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So we um, say that you get to around about here. Yeah, as far as I can, based on what I've got. Uh, sure. Do you want to go left, uh, left or right on this one? Oh, let's go up, up. Just keep going up. I want to okay, sort of well, fan out. Sure. We'll, we'll say you put you here because you do have okay. this rock formation going on here, kind of. Oh, thing. I see. Oh, okay. Yeah, and it, and as far uh, as I know, you can't pass through solid stone just yet. Maybe, <laughs> maybe in future levels. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's that's all right. It is all good. Okay. It is now uh, Viral's turn. They are also going to cast. Uh, Magic Missile at third level. Uh, ba -ba -da -ba -da. Cut, you are taking uh, 16 points of damage, I'm afraid, unless one of your party want, wants to like, do something about it. How do they hit me? Uh, with Magic Missile. So, a uh, force damage. Mm. Cool. Uh, um... Because I can dodge, I can deflect missiles, but I don't think that's magic missiles. Mm. Yeah, I think it's like projectiles, like javelins and mm. stuff. Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> oh, lucky mates. Range, yeah, range <laughs> weapon, not range spell. Yeah. Well, uh, they're not going to move because then Boris would have... Uh, actually, they are going to move. And we'll see what Boris is going to do. Uh, they're going to move south. Uh, would you like to take an attack of opportunity? Mm, uh, uh, yes, yeah, I'm just going to try and slow them down a bit. Sure. Um, so that is, okay, now I get it, 22 to hit. Uh, that definitely hits. Yeah. Um... But their teeth links are going to be squishy like new Um... That's either six or eight damage because I can't. Ray, I think Rage are a 
apply to reactions as well, which in which case eight, eight, eight damage, yeah. Okay, good to know. Uh, but my aim is not to kill them if I have any choice about that. I mean, they're, they're not dead. <laughs> we will say that. Okay, cool. You uh, slap them with the flat side of your sword. And them <laughs> <unconscious>. <laughs> Ayana, top of the round is on you. What would you like to do? All right, I would like to move backwards towards Sky. Okay. All the way? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, how many? One, two, three. So you're one, two, three, four, five, six, seventy feet away. Damn it! It's still Seven, zero. disadvantage. Uh, I'm gonna ask Cut to duck. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Duck and, like your life depends on it. <laughs> and I'm going to take another shot at the Oni. Sure. But it's with disadvantage, so. Yeah, 10 to hit. It doesn't hit. That's going to miss, I'm afraid. It's yeah. another bolt spent. That's uh, all right. It is now the Oni's turn. Uh, they are going to turn to Boris and do a multi-attack uh, for oh, their no. first attack. So they withdraw their glaive. And... Oh, I've got one of those. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Badra. Like, oh, snap. <laughs> uh, 23 to hit on the first attack. That hits. Okay. So 2d10 plus 4. 16 points of slashing damage. Cool. That's So I'll only be taking half. That's for, yeah, because you're raging on you, so you take half damage. Uh, the second attack is, what's that, 15 to hit? No, my armor class is 17. Okay, cool. Damn, that's a, that's, a, that's a good armor class. <laughs> Boris is a ninja turtle. <laughs> that's awesome. My, my armor class just is 17. That's apparently a total thing. So however good or bad, like, my stats change, my armor class will just always be 17. That's good. Maybe. I think that's the highest in the party. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Sweet. Uh, okay, and then for bonus actions. Do, 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 do. Uh, no, that's going to be their turn. That's going to be their turn. Uh, cut is now on you. Okay, okay, okay. Um, let's just go for it. So I want to get in to melee. Can I do it behind, though? Can I do, like, one, sure. two, are, angle, angle. Do you want to go there or the the like, the other side? Uh, my speed is forty-five. Sure, you can get to One, here two, if you'd like. Three. So I will say they're facing Boris at the moment, so you would be stabbed him in the back. Whatever you're doing. Oh, sure. I don't really mind where I punch him if I'm honest. <laughs> 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 um. So I'm gonna go for um, yeah, p punch, punch, punch. Really? Sure. Go for it. Um, that's an eighteen to try and hit. That hits. Uh, eight points of damage. Good to know. And again. Yeah. Twenty-four to hit. That definitely hits. Punch, punch, punch. Nine points of damage. Yeah. And then my bonus action flurry of blows to continue that. Sure. Fifteen to hit. That just misses, I'm afraid. Cool. Oh. And th that's, that's that. Awesome stuff. So is that a, uh, was it a key point that you would have spent to flurry uh, of blows? Um, no. I could just do that as my bonus action, so I can sure. punch someone awesome. three times. <laughs> uh, okay, good cool. to know. Is there anything else you'd like to do? Um, cry a little bit. Um, not very <laughs> well. <laughs> but we're going for it. Um, 
<laughs> they growl at him a little, but yeah, that's 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 me. Okay, good to know. Uh, Neo, uh, she is up, and they are going to cast uh, a, another set of magic missiles at third level. Oof. Uh, only causing nine points of damage, though, with that one. Every little helps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what they say. Uh, Tesco. Tesco says that. Okay. Every other helps. How was that thing? Okay. Because <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm Robin got told. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, Boris, it is on you. What do you have to do? Cool. I I look the only right in the in the in the eyes, and I say. Like I, st I go to slash and I'm like, stop stealing children. Uh, <laughs> okay. Wait, Vitz, I think you might have missed me out because didn't Boris just oh, do the long sword the attack? But no, that was a uh, that was a uh, oh, a that was an attack of opportunity. Attack opportunity. Sorry, yeah, okay, yeah. got it, got it. Yeah, my bad, my bad. Because Boris, uh, Boris Pavato Badra, got it, got it. It's okay. Uh, so first attack, Boris. Uh, one sec, so I have advantage on it now. Eight or eight. I rolled the same. Uh, miss. I, rolled, I rolled a, tw a two twice. <laughs> okay, yeah. So, um, uh, eight, and then the second attack. Sure. Okay, 19. 19 hits. But 19, finally. Cool. Um, Success. <laughs> I didn't want to have only hit Tiefling. Eight, yeah. eight. <laughs> that big damage. Okay, eight points. Good to know. But because I'm recklessly attacking now, any attacks against me have advantage as well. Oh, so, that was reckless. Okay, good to know. Yeah, that, that was reckless. That's why I was rolling with advantage. Got you. Uh, Pavato is on you. Uh, can I move backwards and not be at a disadvantage with my longbow? Uh, what is... do you need? 150 feet or whatever it was? Yeah. Uh, you can move all the way back. Uh, I don't think it's going to... So, one, two, three, four, five. You're still, like, 70 feet away. All right. Um, well, yeah, let's move backwards anyway, then. And then I'll attack him with my longbow. Sure. Uh, so that's... What up, Castle Winks? Uh, Castle Window House! Uh, 15 to hit. 15 misses, I'm afraid. Uh... So that's one attack, and then yep. other one. Uh, 17 to hit. 17 hits. Well yes. done. All right. And damage, five, and then 100 mark. So seven points of damage. Good to know. <coughs> okay. Uh, ba -ba -da -ba -da. Now is the turn of the mighty Badra. Right, so I'm going to move into melee range. Sure. So my Crimson Rite is already on my glaive, because I did that before we sure entered. Is. So I'm going to use my bonus action first and cast that uh, Blood Curse of the Mocked. So I'll cast it on the Oni. So it basically means yep. whenever the Oni takes right damage, I get to roll the damage twice. Sure, um, okay, go for it. And then I attack with my glaive. So I get two sure. attacks. So yeah, you do. First one is a natural 20. Yes! Hell <laughs> yeah. That's, dope. That's dope. I wish it only was. shits itself and runs away. <laughs> 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 All right, so now for, for damage, that is... So roll your damage, e die, double it, and then add your modifiers. Okay. So this so is just a straight-up attack, and then roll your Crimson Right separately, please. Yep. So that is a nine. So we double that. points plus. Plus two is 20. Wow. Nice. And then the right, I have to, oh, hold on one sec. So the right damage is, is that a D6? I think so. Yeah. So that's a that's two. A last time for you. So that's a two. And then I roll it again because of the blood curse. Uh-huh. So that's. 
20 so that's a so that's one so that's three points of right damage okay and 20 from the attack uh badra bolt river oh yes <laughs> how do you want to flush this <laughs> yes. are there are there oh, any yeah. puddles in the in in the area that we can drown toilet drown I mean, in? it's it's a dark damp cave but i don't think there's any like uh puddles or anything <laughs> All right. Well, then I we use my glaive to um, you know take take a page out of uh, a friend Ayana's book and stab him through the eye. As, as <laughs> it's we a precision to do. shot with a massive glaive. It's got to be said. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we say that you cave half his face in in the attempt of <laughs> 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 humbly trying to stab him in the eye. But uh, oh, this is awesome my on the party. <laughs> So we will, we can sort out XP later on, but you are all getting two thousand nine hundred XP. Oh hell, hell yeah. yeah! Which I'm not sure will put you at level eight, but it might do. But we will sort that out afterwards. Ah, uh, can I have uh, either one person roll investigation checks with advantage, or two people roll investigation checks? Uh, just quickly, themselves? what's happening with uh, our tiefling friends? <laughs> we will find out. We will find out. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm uh, investigating plus eight. Oh yeah, then you do it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> eight. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> I know. Uh, I I was used to be a detective back in the day. Dang. Oh, but I only got eleven. <laughs> <laughs> you, you are rolling at advantage <laughs> if you've got someone helping you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm helping. I'm helping. Okay. There you go. Can we a bit all? I just go. Look over there. Look over there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're standing next to each other, like you know. Yeah. Gonna hype up. Yeah. Wait, so someone roll one. again, or is this guy gets to roll again? Oh, yeah, you're all doing right. advantage, guy. Oh, my bad. Um, it's okay. Fifteen. Ooh, okay, cool. Ooh. So you recover forty-two copper pieces. Wait, 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 <laughs> wait. <laughs> forty-two copper. Yeah, fifty-six silver. Six. And. 36 gold pieces. Not too shabby. Mm -hmm. So, uh, next, and Viral, suddenly you see uh, their eyes go back to their usual form, which are the brilliant purple irises uh, to them. They, uh, they recognize that they were in the cave, but they don't know why they're in the position that they are now. They're like, uh, what happened? <laughs> and then don't we, worry, we, it's all okay we... now. We rush over then and say, you've been under the control of a of an Oni, but we've rescued you. And you guys are okay. Yeah, and uh, okay. You, you have a nasty sword. What about so the children? Check it's okay. Uh, the children we haven't found yet. We yeah, we haven't found them all. Are they further in? Well, that's why that. Wait, wait, before I leave the area, can I inspect the Oni's glaive and, <laughs> and, and, and see if it's any better than mine? <laughs> Also, uh, sure, are yes. Only pelts a thing? I'm just <laughs> 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 Only pelts aren't a thing, and given that Badr like caved in half of his face, I don't think you're going to get too much for like his. Oh man! Oh, damn uh, man. Okay, nice. Badr, what does your what does your glaive currently dish out? Damage wise, uh, my glaive dishes out one d10 plus two. <laughs> okay, so in uh. As you're not only in its regular form, it would deal out one d10 plus four slashing damage. Oh, so it's better than mine. It is. Can I take it? <laughs> sure. Sweet. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> now, if you're asking me, how do we change that oh. thing up on dndbeyond.com? Not a clue. <laughs> oh, yeah, it a go. I, okay. Yeah, I was. I if just. If you tried do want to add a mental it. note to add an extra two, then that's fine. Okay. Cool. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. Sweet! I've got a new glaive. There you go. So, I'm pretty happy with that. With your enemy slain, you pass through to the next set of caverns where you see an upward of two dozen children, now free from the spell control in their minds, celebrating loudly. They rush towards you to give thanks, and one child retrieves a set of keys from the corpse of the Oni. The next few minutes are filled with the joy of the children and the clank of the manacles hitting the stone floor. Yay! Mm. You show the children to the way out to the caves, and one by one, they climb the ladder to the top of the well to startle Cedric. 
He signals for the parents to be called, and you all stand back and witness a tearful reunion of the families now free from their nightmares. Can the we sense um, of joy find for that square. Sorry, I want to. I want to find that kid for the the person that we spoke to before, the, and be the, like, the yeah. ginger yes, kid. Yes, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you find you find the ginger kid, and yeah. then you match it up to the parent. It's like, look, I found him. I found him. Yeah, I'm like, there he is. It's exactly how you described him. <laughs> The sense of joy flows from the square through the rest of the market ward, thanks to the efforts of the mighty ethnic squares. GG's, everybody, we did a thing. Music yeah. 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 Jones Templar Doom plays, and it's all good. <laughs> 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 we saved the kids, they're in the well. There you go. And yeah. the slaves. There we go. Nailed it. <laughs> all righty then. Let's see if we can't find someone to raid. Uh, we've got Big Mac129 or Despawn Games, unless anybody in the Trinity chat has any more suggestions. Uh, um, Phil, 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 yeah, Phil 556 is playing Ratchet and Clank. Although I don't know if you want to raid because of spoilers, but, you know, just throwing that out there. Sure. I think Despawn uh, is making his D&D character. He is. So oh. should we raid Despawn again? Yeah. It does seem appropriate, we'll do it. doesn't it? So let's do that. Uh, Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for being in chat. Uh, if we can get this thing to work, that'd be great. Uh, slash raid and uh, is it double D for despawn? It is. Yeah. No, it's not. No, it's fine. Yeah. It's. I've got it. Right. <laughs> it's all good. Thank you, though. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, I hope you had as much fun as I did putting this together. And yeah, and we'll be back next time for more D and D with the ethnic squares. Hell yeah! Oh, Bye. 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 Bye.